Good morning, dear students. Welcome to the class on pre-stressed concrete. Uh, we are in unit two of your syllabus. And uh, we have completed uh, pre-tensioning systems uh, to discuss in the last session. Uh, in this session, we will talk about post-tensioning systems. OK. Uh, let's talk about uh, post-tensioning system. Uh, the particularly uh, post-tensioning system uh, needs to be you know, studied in terms of uh, the devices uh, that are being uh, you know, patented uh, upon their products. Uh, various companies, uh, maybe you can say various uh, uh, developers uh, have uh, patented their works uh, because of the advantages of post-tensioning systems. Uh, so variety of advantages of post-tensioning systems. So uh, pre-tensioning system uh, application is very limited, whereas post-tensioning application is very vast. Okay. So uh, the detailed information of the post-tension system is given in the product catalogs and brochures published by the by the companies like uh, uh, fresnet uh, systems um, i mean like lee mccall system uh, magnell blatten system something like that. so each and every uh, product has got their own catalog and brochure for details of the uh, no same right so there are general guidelines of pre-stressing in uh, class 13 of uh, IS 1343 uh, 2012. The pre-stressing systems and devices are described for the two types of uh, pre-tensioning and post-tensioning separately. So we have completed this uh, pre-tensioning uh, systems and uh, now we will uh, talk about post-tensioning systems. So once again, recalling what is post-tensioning, the tension is applied to the tendons after hardening of the concrete. Okay. So what are all the different stages that we have in post-tensioning? Right. Let us see. The ducts for the tendons or strands, whatever it is are placed along with the reinforcement before casting of the concrete. The tendons are placed in the ducts after the casting of concrete. The duct prevents contact between the concrete and the tendons during the tensioning operation. This is, you can see the basic difference in pre-tensioning and post-tensioning. Uh, pre-tensioning needs to have uh, a bond between concrete and the tendon. So as long as you have the bond, you have uh, the pre-stress pre transfer effectively. Whereas here, you don't have any contact between the concrete and the tendon. That is what is post-tensioning operation. Okay, so the tendons are pulled with uh, the reaction uh, acting against the hardened concrete okay whereas in pre-tensioning uh, it was against a uh, uh, abutment that you have uh, for pulling whereas here uh, against the concrete hardened concrete itself uh, the tendons are pulled okay that is what we call the end blocks okay so if the ducts are filled with the grout then it is called as bonded uh, post tensioning system if the grouting is not there we call we call it as unbonded post tensioning system so post tensioning has got again uh, two uh, categories uh, one is uh, bonded and another one unbonded okay and the grout is a cement based or can be a sand cement mortar containing some admixtures, something like that. Maybe you know, expansive nature of cement or uh, 
water reducing agents likewise either uh, mineral admixtures or chemical admixtures can also be used uh, with the grout right so this is uh, the stages of you know uh, post tension system what happens to unbonded uh, uh, no post tensioning system the ducts are never grouted they just left like that uh, solely by the end anchorages only okay so there is uh, uh, only the end anchorages will hold the uh, tendons whereas in grouted case both the tendon and the uh, end anchorage and the grout both will uh, hold the tendon right the profile of the ducts depends on the support conditions okay uh, for a simply supported member uh, how the profile will be like uh, you want the cable profile to be straight or cable profile to be parabolic or uh, you need uh, the uh, ends of the uh, cable to be at the center of the cross section or can be a below or above so it all depends on the uh, nature of member that is uh, being uh, pre-stressed okay so simply supported member the duct has a sagging profile between the ends which means you have a parabolic nature that we will talk about uh, uh, to decide which uh, profile of the cable i mean the profile of the sta strand uh, must be decided based on the moments that come on the the, the member and also the resisting value uh, from the pre-stressed uh, pre-stress value right so this balance will uh, will will decide the position of the cable okay that we will uh, go into the very next section of uh, your uh, pre-stressed concrete uh, analysis of pre-stress when you analyze uh, you will know the location of the strand right but for a continuous uh, beam the duct sags in the span and hogs over the support like uh, uh, we have hogging moments uh, in the you no know, uh, at the supports and uh, sagging moments uh, in the span right so the, the schematic representation of grouted post tension member just a sketch is given to you uh, how uh, it is going to be okay so this is how it looks like a continuous uh, uh, member it just uh, have to be uh, to shown as an example okay the placement of ducts in a box cutter of a simply supported bridge okay so ducts how the ducts will be okay so this is the duct which is provided to uh, now have a cable to pass through this uh, duct okay and for the tensioning operation right the second photograph uh, shows the uh, end of the box gutter after the post tensioning of some tendons okay so this is uh, the post tensioning operation the real picture of it okay how uh, this will be so this is uh, a box girder uh, type of a uh, no, member you can see the this is what is the hardened concrete portion where you don't need an uh, in, in any abutment uh, to uh, have against uh, jocking operation the concrete itself will act as the abutment that is in post tension and you can see these tubes the white colored tubes here are going to carry the uh, no tendons inside them okay Th these uh, tubes the this end and at uh, this end also you can see these tubes they are they are ducts left for uh, no uh, the uh, pre stressing operation the, the remaining steel that you see it is untensioned steel normal nominal steel of hysd bars okay only the steel that is going to pass through these ducts 
is a pre-stressing steel, which is high tension steel. Okay, other uh, cage that you see, other uh, steel cage you see is just uh, untensioned steel. Okay, so this is what it uh, said the uh, the end of the box girder after uh, the post tensioning of some tendons. Okay, so this this diagram shows how ducts will be. So this is a grout tube. How grouting also uh, can be taken up. So this is uh, the way uh, dead end of the anchorage anchoring system. Just a line diagram is shown to you, and this is a real picture of it. Okay, and you can see that uh, some tendons are being anchored. Then uh, the anchoring operation is completed. Anchors are being arranged. Then tendons are cut. Okay, so this is the uh, member which is ready uh, uh, after uh, uh, tensioning operation. So first we prepare hardened concrete. Then we will insert the high tension steel. You can see still uh, some of the uh, no tendons are to be pulled okay only some portion of tensioning operation is complete only these uh, uh, tendons are being uh, completed to pull right so that's about pictorial representation of post tensioning operation very clearly so uh, we will uh, first prepare the end block which uh, will act as the abutment okay for you know, uh, to, to care, take care of the hydraulic jock uh, support support for the jocking operation so that uh, to pull the tendon you will have uh, uh, something called support okay so against which the uh, tendon is being pulled so this is what is called end block is separately designed okay end block design is separate and the rest of the member design is separate right so end block uh, stresses uh, will be uh, very heavy and you will have uh, no something called bursting uh, bursting uh, pressure also uh, will be acting uh, in the end block that we will see in detail once you uh, talk about end block designs okay so against this end block, we will go for jocking operation and uh, no, leaving the ducts uh, and the rest of the concrete is prepared. Then the once everything is ready, then the jocking operation will start takes place. Okay. Right. So uh, just summarizing the steps that uh, we have been talking about. So first cast the concrete and then place the tendons in the ducts provided then uh, place the anchorage block one side and the jock on the other side other end apply the tension to the tendons one end anchor will hold the uh, reinforcement uh, i mean pre-stressing steel the other end uh, against the hardened concrete the jock will operate apply the tension then seating up the wedges once the tensioning is done the anchoring is done and then cutting the tendons okay right so after anchoring a tendon at one end the tension is applied at the other end by a jock the tensioning of the tendon and pre-compression of concrete occur simultaneously because already concrete is cast and it is ready hardened concrete is ready so parallelly as you pull the tendon the stress taken by the steel will be transferred parallelly to the concrete uh, at the same time simultaneously okay whereas in pre-tensioning the steel first we will pull the steel I mean high tensile steel we hold it then we pour the concrete we allow for hardening then after that we cut the tendon then only it transfers the pressure to the concrete whereas here it is not like that 
the concrete is hardened concrete is ready and you are uh, pulling the the tendon against the hardened concrete itself so as you pull the tendon the pressure that you apply uh, on the concrete is nothing but the free stress okay so that is what is uh, no so a system of self equilibrating force develop after the stretching of the tendons okay so because it is parallel uh, the, st the stretching of the tendon and also transfer of pre uh, compression to the concrete okay so this is just a schematic uh, diagram of uh, how a post tension member uh, a line diagram to draw it very simply in a simple manner for you uh, if somebody asks you uh, represent the post tensioning system in diagrammatic representation okay so this is something like this. so a casting bed with a duct left for uh, tendon okay and in uh, cross section view and uh, the elevation view okay then after tensioning one end you, you will find the anchorage and then other end you will find the jock once the jocking operation is done uh, we will go for anchoring this end also right so this is what is uh, now duct uh, then once the tendon is kept the duct may be grouted or may not be grouted okay so this is like uh, no, anchoring the tendon at the uh, stretching end okay so both ends you will find the anchors whereas uh, the pretensioning system uh, anchoring is done and then it, it will be removed uh, after the you know, uh, steel uh, high tensile steel is being cut okay so going for the advantages of post tensioning system already talked about in the pre-tensioning system but again to recall once again so post tensioning is suitable for uh, heavy cast in place members just like you have seen a box girder being uh, casted a heavy member okay waiting period in uh, casting bed is less okay because already hardened concrete is ready just jacking operation doesn't take much time okay so once the jocking operation is done anchoring is ready then member is ready shift it to the site okay so transfer of pre-stress is independent of transmission length because uh, in case of pre-tensioning the the, the pre-stress is transferred through the bond between the concrete and steel so the length of the member is important okay for transferring the pre-stress whereas in post-tensioning post tension system you are not transferring the pre-stress by the bond between the concrete and steel there is there is no bond at all okay so the, there is a duct and there is no connection between steel and uh, concrete only from the end member from the end block the stress is being transferred so th there is no point in uh, the transmission length for post tensioning so this, that, those are the advantages disadvantages like uh, devices anchoring devices and grouting equipment <coughs> okay uh, are the uh, you know, costliest uh, costly effort okay anchoring anchorage device where pretensioning system doesn't require any anchorage device only uh, uh, till the concrete gets hardened you need anchorage otherwise there is no need for anchorage okay but whereas uh, in, uh, for post tensioning system you need to have anchors till its life okay so that is uh, the disadvantage grouting sometimes uh, if you want to grout this you need grouting equipment also okay so this is uh, like advantages and disadvantages of post tensioning system so just to uh, this session is just to introduce you what is a post tensioning system and how it is going to be the process stages okay and showing in terms of uh, pictures 
and uh, the the way you can easily draw the diagrams what is a post tension system okay right and uh, the advantages disadvantages which are already dealt uh, in case of retentioning again once again we have dealt this uh, advantages and disadvantages okay from next session onwards we'll talk about these uh, devices okay which are very important for post tensioning uh, the, these uh, uh, anchors uh, which because they, they are part of the member now because as long as the member is there the anchor should be there so uh, the anchors play a very vital role so the uh, patented anchoring devices are there so those devices we'll talk about in the coming sessions okay right